Hypertension or high blood pressure affects one in three adults in Australia. It's the number one risk factor for premature death. Melbourne researchers are hoping to secure funding for a new medical procedure they hope can help reverse those alarming statistics. Lisa Whitehead reports. Livestock buyer John Cuff loves his job. At 65, he still works three days a week and he has no plans to give it up. But 12 months ago, he thought his working life was over. I just inspected my stock after I'd finished and started walking back to the canteen to have lunch. And I found that I just couldn't, couldn't make the distance. Until then, John Cuff says he'd suffered few symptoms of hypertension, even though he was diagnosed with high blood pressure 20 years ago. But it was reaching dangerous levels and he was struggling to keep it under control with medication. What I found with my medication is that it would work for maybe a month, even two months, up to two months. And, and then the body would get a resistance to it and, and go back to its normal function of, um, of high blood pressure. So how have you been, John? High blood pressure runs in John Cuff's family. His father died of a stroke. It's probably the prime cause in 50 to 60 per cent of the stroke patients that present to hospital. It's also got a significant role in heart disease and um, also in the development of kidney failure. Um, so it is a major problem. A healthy blood pressure reading is a peak of 120 over a resting level of 80. John Cuff's blood pressure was regularly hitting a worrying 200 over 100 and he was running out of options. I think what we're going to go maybe halfway along that superior branch. Cardiologist Professor Rob Whitburn at Melbourne's St Vincent's Public Hospital offered him a lifeline. You get a little bit of discomfort just as we're starting the treatment. Seven months ago, he performed a revolutionary treatment on John Cuff that's been hailed as the holy grail for patients with chronic drug-resistant hypertension. After maybe a month uh, with the medication, it was getting down to 135 on 70, which is, I don't know, I suppose it's almost normal. In 2007, Professor Whitburn began working with Melbourne's Baker IDI Heart and Diabetes Institute on a world-first trial for the procedure known as renal denervation. It requires a, a sheath in the femoral artery through the groin, a small catheter placed in the renal artery, the kidney artery by either side, and energy is delivered to basically uh, knock out the sympathetic nerves. The device delivers high frequency radio waves to effectively switch off hyperactive sympathetic nerves that fuel dangerously high blood pressure. A fifth of patients in the trial were able to reduce their medications after having the treatment. More than 80% had a significant reduction in blood pressure. We've substantially reduced the risks of all those uh, events such as stroke or heart attack in those patients. Renal denervation is, I think, a significant uh, breakthrough in terms of our ability to manage resistant high blood pressure. This plea will be going inferiorly. Like yes. Professor Whitburn pioneered the procedure in Melbourne and now other major public hospitals are beginning to offer the treatment to patients. Nicholas Martin is 53. With his blood pressure spiking at 290 and a resistance to the hypertension drugs, he says renal denervation is his last option. We've tried nearly everything, including... Um, uh, Chinese medicines and different diets, different and nothing really worked. And these poor people have tried every medication, had uh, multiple complications and side effects from those, and have been very resistant. Um, so for them, this is a this is a uh, you know a, a life saving procedure in their eyes. But it's an expensive process, costing about eight to ten thousand dollars per patient. And currently, St Vincent's Public Hospital is footing the bill. But it says that's unsustainable. So the question is, who is going to pay for it? We have made an application to the state government uh, under a new technologies grant uh, for some funding, which we're hopeful we'll get. Um, but all the uh, centres throughout Australia will be in the same situation, all trying to fund this and. Uh, we need some sort of recurrent form of funding to, to continue on with this treatment. 
You OK? Not too bad? The Victorian government is expected to decide next week if it will grant the $2 million needed to treat another 200 patients. The Stroke Foundation argues in the bigger picture it will be money well spent. Given many of those events such as stroke are disabling, um, leading to um, people, for instance, not being able to work or needing residential care, one would anticipate that there would be quite a solid cost-benefit argument in favour of treating these patients with, um, with this approach. Without this denovation procedure, I'd more likely than not be retired. I'm happy as Larry that I, I can do this and I urge other people, if they can possibly get it done, to get it done. <laughs> <laughs>